All right, guys, let's see how we can create uh, this form. Uh, so we can have the following functionality when we enter uh, certain values, uh, we see that the button submit is uh, enabled and automatically disabled. Also, we have a validation. So if we enter certain information which is not uh, acceptable, uh, we see that uh, we have to choose another username or password. And if we, uh, let's say, uh, choose a longer password and uh, username, we get uh, an object of our uh, username with a message of success and when it's created. All right, so let's see how uh, we can uh, create this in uh, JavaScript. We go to our editor and uh, here first we see a normal HTML document with some styles and this is actually our form. Uh, we have uh, one input for the username, one input for the password and one submit button as well as one span, uh, which will display the resulting information uh, from the submission of the form. And now to the script, with the document query selector, we are grabbing the user input form and we are adding, the moment we are pressing on the submit button, this sign up handler uh, function. And the same we are doing with the username. So that's the basic approach. We are getting uh, an element and then we are attaching an event handler to this element. Uh, we also have another event handler um, here attached. Uh, it is just anonymous function. And inside we are just checking whether when we are pressing on the button uh, to enable it or not based on the validation of uh, the username value. All right, so let's uh, check this function is valid. Actually, our real validator. Okay, is valid is here. First, we have uh, defined certain constants, which later in the validator we are checking. We are not using here directly the string, but we are checking versus a certain constant. And this way it's very easy to change here the information and then uh, just use the constants all over in our uh, code. For the required, we are just checking whether the length of the element is uh, greater than uh, zero. Okay, so that's for the validator. And if you remember, here we are adding to the submit button sign up handler. And this is the sign up uh, handler uh, function. Actually, in the first row, we are preventing the default execution of the submission of the form. So the form will not uh, refresh our page. And uh, we are trying to create an user. And uh, if uh, this uh, create user function succeeds, uh, we are displaying the information. In case of error, also we are displaying um, the error. What is interesting here is that uh, everything inside of the try block will be actually produced from the server. Uh, so we have option to uh, try to do certain action in the server. And if it doesn't succeed, we will display to the user error message. And we are uh, doing this with a catch operator. The other thing which is interesting is uh, that since uh, create user is uh, asynchronous function, we actually don't know um, the time uh, the database uh, creates the user and returns a successful value. That's why we're using a promise here. And uh, the moment we have information, we'll be displaying a certain result. Let's see what is inside of uh, the uh, create user uh, function. First, we are checking the username and the password where they are valid. If not, we are uh, creating validation error by making a new exception. And uh, we can access uh, the exception with the here error dot message from this catch block. Okay. Actually, uh, since we are not submitting to a real database, I've uh, tried here to simulate um, uh, such uh, database checking uh, and registering uh, logic. So I'm wrapping all the logic inside of a promise. Why I'm doing this? Uh, because I'm returning this promise afterwards. And uh, this promise is consumed here within the then uh, section, all right? And uh, if uh, you actually uh, will do this uh, with a real database, I advise you just to use the fetch operator and to compose a certain uh, a body of the document uh, together with its uh, headers and uh, the logic will uh, remain the same. Okay, so we are creating the promise and we have one flag is created to true. If the user is created, actually we are resolving the promise. So we are exiting from this promise with the following object. We are sending the username, we are sending the created at, 
Um, here we are actually composing a new data and we are just uh, getting the integer part of it. And we are sending a message of successfully created user. Uh, if we remove uh, here the flag and we set it to false, we'll reject the promise and uh, we'll send just a message to the uh, user. And those two promises, whether they are resolved or rejected, will be catched exactly here in this uh, then block. So this way we can display uh, specific information uh, to the user very easily. Let's now see the display info function. Uh, so as we can see that uh, we are providing uh, different information to this function to be displayed on the, um, the screen. Um, actually display info uses a uh, certain class uh, which is uh, info and uh, it just sets and unsets the hidden uh, uh, class of this uh, ID info element uh, which is just uh, switching the opacity from uh, 0 to 1 and uh, here is the function. So we are grabbing the span element and we are uh, filling its uh, inner HTML with the information provided as a parameter and then we just uh, toggle the element uh, to hidden uh, so this way we achieve this uh, hide and show functionality all right guys i hope the information was uh, useful for you and uh, if you like the tutorial uh, you can subscribe to the channel